Oh, hey, howdy, folks. Welcome back. Uh, I guess I don't have to tell you who's here. Ain't that some shit? A YouTube strike, man, and it was totally wrong. I'm still pissed off about that. There wasn't anything about that right. Anyways, we're going to start on this Echo Web guitar. There's a, the headstock, the fretboard, the body. <laughs> it's got some beautiful cherry in the back. The back and sides are made of cherry. And uh, the top is spruce. And that crack, I've been humidifying this. I finally got it up. It, it, it maintains humidity now at 42% by itself without helping it. i got to get that up to 45 to 55% before I can do a thing to this guitar. But that crack, you could feel it and hear it before, remember? You don't so much feel it and hear it now. Now, if you guys remember, a lot of you new subscribers wasn't here then, but about six months ago, um, I had a guitar come in here. And I thought it would be a good idea to ask you guys, you know, what would you do if this guitar came into your shop? What would you do? How would you put in the comments below how you'd repair it? That video was uh, got a lot of comments on it. I don't remember what the name of the video was or which one it was, but it just went nuts, man, with comments. And you guys had some really good ideas on different ways to prepare, you know, to repair, rather. All the problems it had. I wish I could remember. Maybe I'll put a link below to that video if I can find it and remember what it was. Anyways, I thought we'd do it again. About six months or so later. However long it's been, I can't remember. But uh, this Echo Web guitar needs to be a little bit more humidification, moisture content in the wood before we start the repairs on it. But I thought we would just do that very same thing again. I'll bring the camera over here and we'll inspect it inside, out, everywhere. All the things that's wrong with it that I know of so far. And then you guys can put in the comments, you know, if it came into your shop, what would you do? Would you have humidified it like I've been doing and am still doing? It was extremely dry. I mean, it was dried out big time. I'm surprised there wasn't a lot more damage to the top. They always sink in right here. They always, this area right in here, normally you have a bunch of glue joints right there and over years of that thing drying out and being humidified and dried out and humidified and everything moves. That wood swells up and it shrinks and swells and shrinks and moves. And uh, you know like I say they collapse right in this area usually when they're so dry. I think that's what this one did that made the, made the fretboard extension pull away from the top up here. I, like I say, I'll get the camera and bring you over closer and show you what I'm talking about here in a minute. And I'll show you all the things I know it's wrong with it. And you can put in the comments below. Uh, you know, of course, I have to do what the customer tells me to fix. And i got to do it in steps that I see fit. Uh, I can't tell you very much because it will influence your comments the way you would fix it if it came in your shop. So any, you know, bear that in mind. I'm just, uh, I might be able to use some of your ideas, but I probably, you know, already got it in my head the way I have to do it. But it would be interesting to see how you guys would go about a fix like this. So let me get the camera and bring you over here closer, and we'll start to inspect this puppy closer. Hold on. Here you can see this top, how it's, it's went really tightly back together, okay? Would you put glue in that and pump it down in there? You've seen me do it before a bunch of times. Put a suction cup on there and push that glue down into that crack as much as possible. Would you do that to seal it or would you just say, oh, it's sealed good enough? You can't even feel it anymore. I can still see it a little bit. Would you put a cleat there or would you not? Uh, I'm not going to tell you whether I'm going to or not until we actually start to do it. Now, I don't know how well you're going to see the bridge is pulling up on it. You can't, you really can't tell it much because, you know, under string tension, he said you could really see it. And you can see it a little bit, maybe without string tension on it. Uh, not very much, but believe me, it's pulled up. It is definitely pulled up. 
would you uh, I see a lot of pick marks right there indentations where someone's pick has been catching the wood uh, but yeah would you would you put force glue down that crack or would you just say oh it's good man can't feel it to be all right or would you pump glue down in there to be absolutely sure it was sealed and would you put a cleat under it and what kind of cleat would you put if you would put one under there and which way would you run the wood grain of the cleat okay now that's that much the bridge definitely has to come off we got to take that and I'm hoping oh god I hope he used some kind of glue that reacts to heat really well I mean if you use something like epoxy or something you know it doesn't react to heat very good hoping it's wood glue or hide glue probably is what it is we're going to find out but that definitely has got to come off and uh, would you repair this and put a cleat on the upper bottom side before you took the bridge off or would you take the bridge off first and then do that and clamp it and why <laughs> oh good lord let me uh, turn the guitar up on its side now. okay you're looking at the 14th fret marker there's the 12th the two dots and then the one dots of 14th fret and you can see now it, it looks to me like the neck has lifted upwards higher than the the plane of the top in the neck joint that's what it looks like with a bolt on neck you wouldn't think that would happen I thought at first this area was so dried out that it shrunk down in because they always do shrink there and that may be what started all of this okay but that neck has got to go back down flush with the top right there yes I got a good lens on here I just need to learn how to work it you see where the fretboard extensions pulling loose from the top even a little bit back there it looks like but mainly it's this area right there from about the 13th 14th fret all the way up to half of the fretboard extension so I am thinking we're going to have to unglue the fretboard extension there and we're going to have to somehow get that neck to be flat with the top of the guitar. You can see, I hope you can see that, how it's not flat with it now. See what I mean? In order to get the fretboard extension to go down tight against the top of the guitar, then that neck has got to go down and be flush, you know, with the top of the guitar as well. And it's a bolt-on neck. Hold on. We can see here it's a bolt-on neck. The top adjustment is the truss rod that you see there. The one in the center of your screen is the bolt on neck, the bolt for the neck. Now, that bolt screws into something. And it screws into something probably into this heel, okay? If we move the neck down that way to make it flush with the top here, then whatever that bolt screws into inside of there may move down with it. I'm not sure what kind of mechanism he used on this. I don't know if it's like Taylor Guitars or if it's something that Doyle came up with on his own or made. Yeah, I don't know. And I can't get a hold of him to find out. So, but I hope you can see what I'm saying. The neck right here needs to go down that way in order to be flush with the top of the guitar here, okay? And in doing that, whatever that bolt inside of here whatever that screws into in this heel is going to also I'm thinking it's going to also be moved get moved down and it looks like maybe a 32nd of an inch it's not very much maybe it won't be enough to hurt but the neck has definitely got to go down there's no two ways about that in order to make all this uh, match up here flush you know the way it should so would you fix this first? Would you get in there and take that bolt out and pull the neck? Fix whatever you had to do to fix that? Put it back together and then tackle the bridge? Or would you do this first? Or would you do this when you had the bridge off before you did that? Tell me the order of the steps you would do it in. And I, like I say, I've already got it in my head. I know how I'm going to do it, but... Uh, you know, it'd be interesting to hear how you guys would approach this if it came into your shop. And it looks like the neck is pulled away from the entire body of the guitar right there a little bit. I think you can see that. I 
tiny crack there, which tells me it's not fitting in the neck joint tightly like it should. But, like I say, you can see there how much it moved up. Look at that. By moving, the neck moving upward that much could cause that crack. Because it's not fitting tight in the joint. And I got a feeling we're going to end up changing the entire angle on this neck. Because, I'll show you why here. The neck is still not straight. I haven't adjusted the truss or did anything. But when you do this, I'd like to see a little bit more room there. That goes up over the bridge, but it lifts the straight edge a little bit. Just a tiny bit. And that's probably why it's got such a low saddle in the guitar. The saddle was very, very low. Now, ideally, that that straight edge should come back and slide right over the bridge and we'd like to see about that much room between it and the bridge or at least at the very least have the plane of that bridge identical to the plane of the fretboard and it's not right now but like I say the neck's not straight either so this, this is still yet not an accurate reading anyways how would you approach this? Would you do the neck first, take the bolt out, uh, unglue the fretboard extension, pull the neck, and see what's going on in there and fix that? Or would you remove the bridge first, clean it, fix everything, fix the crack, the cleat, glue the bridge back on, and have all this back here finished before you did anything to that? Let me know in the comments below. I think it would be interesting to hear what everyone would uh, how they you would go about this and the order you would go about it let's get a mirror and look inside there you can see the X bracing been scalloped voicing bars have been scalloped uh, what else do we see look how hefty the back braces are in this jewel that's some serious back braces right there but uh, like I say, I didn't see any loose braces or any any indication of any problems on any of those braces there. On the top or the back. Which is good, man. Always a good thing. Really like to know if you used hide glue on this or just a type of wood glue or what maybe he kind of wood he used. So there you can see the uh, that's another back brace. That cherry is beautiful wood. There's the uh, bolt on bolt for the neck going through the neck block. And this is very hard to do. Very, very hard to do. And that's the truss rod adjustment screw, right? Oh, wait. Maybe there's. Ah, I didn't see this before. I didn't even know those two bolts were in there. I'm betting you. There's screws under here, under both of those, and that will not lift up until we pop these out, and, uh, yeah, sure enough, man, there's bolts on the other side of these. I didn't know that till right now. That's why I say with the neck joint, see, I'm not sure what we're going to get into. Yeah, that's the truss rod that we were feeling, and two two. Two little nuts on the on these. Might not have to pop those out. Uh, might just be able to take the nuts off. Pry around here and get. To, if it's glued, it may not even be glued. Now that I know it has screws in here. So, anyways, I'm glad I saw that. I didn't know that. I know these guitars are not like, you know, Doyle had his own style of building, and uh, you know he didn't copy anyone I, I don't think I mean uh, I've never seen that in a guitar before I mean this type of guitar dreadnought guitar so uh, anyways there you've had a look inside you know what it looks like inside and out now and about as much about it as I know let me get one more shot of that bridge plate for you if I can with this yeah there you can see what a really big bridge plate that is. Huge bridge plate. Maybe that was his trick to getting 
the good sounds that he got out of these guitars that he built. Very cool. I see some writing, I think. I'm not sure what that is. I'm at a really weird angle here to get you these shots. But there you go. Okay, now the neck is perfectly straight until we get to right, right here. And you can see it appears to be sunken in right there. So let me explain a problem here that we have, okay? You all know that's supposed to slide right up over that bridge. And like I say, I'd like to see about that much space between the plane of that bridge and the plane of the fretboard. Right now, it lifts the straight edge a tiny bit. You might be able to see it going up there as it goes up, okay? Let me explain the problem to you now. When we fix this and we lower the neck down into that joint to make this uh, plane of the top here match the plane of the neck, not the fretboard, the neck, we're going to be setting that neck down even more, down that way, okay? Then when we put a straight edge on here, it's going to even hit the bridge harder. So I'm pretty sure we're going to have to basically do a neck reset on this is what we're going to do. But I'm going to be able to do it way cheaper than I would a guitar with the neck glued on it. And have to steam it off and all that crap. Uh, way, way cheaper. But I'm almost certain we're going to have to uh, readjust the angle on this neck after we get it down in there. That's why that, that had that little tiny saddle, a very low saddle on this guitar. That's why it was so low, because uh, it's it's lost its neck angle over the years. This guitar was made in 2009. I showed you that before. Looks like it was number nine. Now, I don't know if that was the ninth guitar that Doyle built, or the ninth one he built in 2009. I don't know. I know he built a bunch of these, and I'm not sure how many, but if it was built in 2009... And it's had some time to dry out and, and all this stuff change here. And it did. It changed big. You can see that big crack I, I showed you there already. Right there. When we shove that neck down deeper into the joint, the fretboard and the fretboard extension is going to also come down. Ooh, I love these lens. Thank you guys again for that. All this is going to go down that way, okay? Then when we put a straight edge on here, it's going to hit this bridge harder. So that tells me we're going to have to angle this neck back that way more. The entire neck, we're going to have to angle it back like that. So the straight edge will clear the bridge when we check the uh, plane of each of them. So, uh, put in the comments below, what would you do, man? <laughs> Hold on. Speaking of comments, I'm still sick, man. I'm, I feel better. I feel yeah, good compared to how I did, but still sick. Speaking of comments, how y'all like the way uh, YouTube's notifications working <laughs> on comments? Mine's been broke for a couple of weeks now. Uh, comments and PMs and messages and emails, and uh, a lot of you are getting you know a little pissed because I haven't replied. Folks, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys are watching the subscriber count or not. It's, and I'm digging it, man. I hope it keeps going. But it's just almost impossible for me to reply to every comment, every email, every Facebook message. And, you know, I, I try to reply to comments in the videos. I even get behind on that. But between it all, you know, it's just uh, humanly impossible. I've been using my phone for a lot of answering comments just so uh, I can talk into it and it types out what I say and that's usually a disaster with a spell checker and crap but uh, it's fast and uh, that helps a lot you know in the comments. I love getting a lot of comments on the videos I hope you guys comment the shit out of this video not that this video ever had any shit in it but you know what I mean and tell me how you would go about repairing this guitar if it came into your shop what would you do first tell me the steps you would do it in and why and would you put a cleat in there, you know? And then the next video, we're going to start on this. I'm going to start on it, and I'll explain everything to you the way I'm going to do it. 
I'll, I'll make it all out real clear and I tell you exactly the steps that I'm going to take to repair this guitar and we'll see how much of a, an agreement we are in or we're not in who knows <laughs> we'll know in the comments I guess so stay tuned this is going to be a fun fix we're gonna, I know we're gonna, I'm almost I'm about 90 percent sure we're going to have to do a neck reset but like I say, I can do this way cheaper than I would a uh, neck that's glued onto a guitar. Who knows? Maybe this is glued on and screwed on and bolted on. We're going to find out. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the next video. And we'll tear into it. Cheers. See you then. Tell them. Say, I love you. What? Tell the YouTube family. They've been, they've been waiting on a fix for you. Look at her hair all grown out. She looks fat because her hair's all grown out so big. I've been calling her Curly Q. Tell them. I love you. How's that? Well, I, I don't believe they understand that you love them just yet. Say. It's going to get wild. I love Are we off?